CCX Sports presents coverage of high school gymnastics tonight at Northwest Suburban Conference Meet featuring the Champlain Park Rebels and the Maple Grove Crimson. From Maple Grove High School, John Jacobson along with Debbie Rasmussen, our first telecast of the season. But each of these teams have been in the gym for a little over a month now. Debbie, each team's had three meets, so some time to kind of get acclimated to the new season, work on some routines and tricks as they get to, to this last meet before the holiday break. You know, in this meet before the holiday break is kind of important, and I think the one thing judges are going to be looking for, judges as well as coaches, is the consistency of these girls. Like you said, they've had a couple meets under their belts. Now it's time to polish, to get the best score that you can before you head into the holiday break, because as soon as they come back in January, those meets starts happening before you know it's at sectionals and state. Both of these teams have topped 139 points a couple of times this year, so already at a good level for Very this good. early in the season. And you, you get that mark, you figure you should be able to get or possibly be able to get without injuries in the mid-140s. And for Champlain Park and for Maple Grove, they're in different sections. That's a state tournament level number perhaps to win their yeah, sections absolutely it is and you know um, with the talent that's coming up with both of these teams there's no reason why each one of these teams can't get into that 140 range and that's where you want to be in about a month and a half when we're getting ready to go for sectionals we'll take time out and we'll come back with our first routine we'll be up with the vault first it's champlain park maple grove gymnastics coming up next on 12 sports What makes your community feel like home? Is it knowing what's happening in your neighborhood? Or when people know your name? Connections make us a community. For more than 30 years, Northwest Community Television has connected citizens, neighbors, even sports fans through video. You can learn about the latest news through our truly local newscast. We cover and air around 150 high school sporting events every year. For our cities, we air parades and city meetings that you can watch whenever you want. Then, any citizen of our cities can create and share their own original content. We'll even teach you how to use the equipment too. We have always provided you with a connected community experience. And as life gets busier than ever, we will continue to engage, inform, and inspire through CCX Media. So you can stay connected to the place you call home. Open Park, Maple Grove, gymnastics here on CCX Sports. Maple Grove first on the vault. Kate Sasowski will get us started tonight with her first of two vaults. Starting out with a very, very strong vault for Maple Grove. That vault there is called Asukahara. She does a half twist on the vault into a back flip off. A lot of teams don't even have girls capable of throwing that ball, and here it is, their first one out of the shoot. So nice job for them. It kind of shows you the potential depth of the team. I kind of think something else that we might see this year, too, is she is only throwing one ball. It doesn't look like she's going to do two. It Excellent score on that first ball, so I, I suppose in this case, maybe no need to. Score of 9.0. Kiara Poling is up next for Maple Grove. Excuse me, 8.9 the score for, for Kate. And now Kiara Poling. Garrett's first ball. Ooh. Just landed a, a little bit short on that. She just needs to block a little harder, gets a little tiny bit more height, then have a little bit more rotation. You see here, very strong, but she just didn't quite make it all the way around. She was a little short on that. Good thing that everything she's landing on is incre incredibly soft. So. Now here's the situation where she is going to do another vault. She did lose five tenths for that fall, so she is definitely going to give it a second go. Again, doing the Sukahara as we saw the first gymnast do. Her first vault an 8.5. 
She's a little bit faster run, more power when she comes off the board and a little bit better block off the platform. Oh. Almost. That was that was definitely a better mod than the first one, and she almost looked like she was gonna make that. But um, you'll see here that Matt underneath kind of slipped a little too. Don't know if that contributed to it, but just needs to lift her shoulders up. Alex Kara is next for Maple Grove. Alex a senior. One of the returning varsity performers for the high school team. A lot of these girls, like the first two we saw, Kate and Kiara, coming out of various club programs to compete to high school this year. Um, Minnesota does have some pretty strong uh, private clubs that you know, the high schools are very fortunate with her when girls decide to step away from the private club competition and head over to the high school competition as well. There's a couple in the area. We've got Gleason's of Maple Grove and Twin City Twisters are just two that are in this area. Both very reputable. They're pulling second ball to 8.35. Alex Kerr is ready to go. Sukahara, uh, again in the tuck position. She had great speed on the run. You'll see here, nice block. Shoulders were up and just a tiny little step on the landing. This is an event that Coach Shannon Hoover believes her team will definitely improve on and get higher scores once the season goes on. They've not had terribly high scores for vault so far, but she expects that to improve. A nice score for Alex Kara on her first vault, though, 9.15. Beautiful score on that first vault. Again, very, very nice vault. Um, very clean, nice go, landing on that. You'll see here she had great height, which is, again, something the judges are looking for. Again, just a couple steps on the landing. I'm looking at that going. That, that extra set of padding kind of slips. Personally, I think I might take that away. 9.05 9 on the second bolt. There's a look. At Shannon Hoover, sixth year head coach now here at uh, Maple Grove. The very good team she's got this year. Some returning varsity members, as I mentioned, some new girls for the high school team, but a lot of talent. Good first vault for Emma Engard. Beautiful vault for Emma. Um, again, just very, very clean. She had great power, good strength. When we're looking at these vaults, we're looking at the pre fight. How is the form on there? Excellent. Legs come together. She does it in a tuck position. More importantly, just that small step on the landing. We should know, too, that the coach is allowed to stay in there. And as long as he doesn't touch the gymnast, there is no deduction for that. But on vaults like this, as a spotter, you want to make sure that these girls um, aren't going to get injured and it's your job to step in. If you see that the girl's too low, you know, or maybe going to do some type of a crash landing, they will step in and, and help out a little bit. Go, Emma! Emma Engar decides to go with just the one vault, and 9.15, and now Emma Siemens, the fifth and final gymnast for Maple Grove, is up. Watching her in warm-up, she's throwing the most difficult vault we've seen so far. It's a Yurchenko. She'll be doing a run-up back handspring onto the platform and then a backflip after that. Does that almost in the laid-out position. Height absolutely incredible. Here she goes. This is gorgeous, beautiful form. She does have that step on the landing. This vault is extremely difficult. So again, I don't think that it actually will be really huge for that. 
you're starting to see a lot of the Yurchenkos at the high school level, which is kind of fun because you see a lot of this. Granted, they, they're adding twisting elements too when you get into the college level and also obviously the Olympics that we all watched. Winner high score for the season, 9.4 for that first yeah, vault. But uh, beautiful vault. And the Siemens will, I'm sure, happy with that score, but she'll give it one more try here. Let's see here, there's not a whole lot she can improve, and I'd love to see her try it in the laid out position without the bend in the knees. Beautiful, again, gorgeous fault. So much power on that, and the height was wonderful. Let's see here, she's got such a strong run. Here's that round up back handspring, great form. And just a tiny step. It'd be interesting if they're calling that for a layout or, or a tuck, just because she could definitely, you know, by the end of the year, have that straight body and get that laid out position. Beautiful. 9.45 on the second vault, so even a little better, five tenths. Five one hundredths of a point higher on vault number two. Great job by Emma Siemens. That's the end of our first rotation. We'll take time out. More gymnastics coming up on CCX Sports. Champlin Park up on the vault next. Most of my family, they never graduated high school or even let alone go to college. So I'm trying to break that barrier. Every day after work, went straight to school, studied hard, and, and it paid off. I could not have done it alone. I see the future is really bright for me. The high school diploma is just added to the confidence and now I feel unstoppable. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. We are back at Maple Grove. Good rotation for, uh, for Maple Grove to start tonight. 36.65 for their gymnasts on the vault. And now we will see the Champlain Park Rebels. Sydney Eckert will lead it off. Followed by Kara McElmurray, Amber Lovely, Cheney New, and Liz Hammond. Watching Champlain Park warm up, they have some talent on their vaulting spot as well. You know, one thing that coaches are going to be looking for too as we get into this pre holiday break, what's the consistency of these gymnasts? It's one thing to be in the gym, to do routine, 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 but how do they perform during competition? You want your girls confident when they step out on the floor. Sydney Eckert's first vault. Sydney's starting out, it's like a, like a half a year Chanko. So she does the round up, back handspring onto the platform with the straight body position off. Not sure what the starting value is to this, but this is obviously in preparation for throwing the Yurchenko and great form on this vault. I wonder how difficult it is. I mean, I know with a lot of the gyms that we go into now, that vaulting area is always so close to the wall. But depending on which side you're normally used to having it on, again, another nice vault, just a small step. Like, is the Champlain, is the wall on the right, or is the wall on the left? They got a lot of room at Champlain Park. They have it right in the field house. That's so there's no wall right there like they compared to most of the gyms that we go to, like uh, Rosetta and Hopkins, Hopkins and a lot of the others. Sydney Eckert's first ball was at 8.125, the second ball at an 8.15. And each gymnast gets two vaults to take the high score of the two, and then of the five individual scores, the top four count toward the team score. Some of the gymnasts actually do start out in the hallway. Here I'm back, I'm wearing it. Yeah, the Sea of Ghoul opened 20 years ago and they forgot the rule, measure twice, cut once. One <laughs> <laughs> Too true. Beautiful Yurchenko for her. Um, again, the, I watch it on replay. I don't know if the coach stepped in or touched or not, but here she has, here's her roundup back handspring. She's going for that back flip. 
he did kind of help her around. There will be a five tenth deduction for that. But again, this is probably a gymnast that is working on this vault. And my guess is by the time February comes, she'll be throwing that all by herself. But you don't want to risk injury at this stage of the game either. That's John Whiney, a veteran coach here for Champlin Park. Three times in a row now his teams have made the state tournament last year, the best ever fourth place finish. And it's got an excellent chance of winning Section 5AA again this year. Kara, second ball. First one was an 8 5. That one there, just doing that half year chanko, but I don't think you could do that vault any better. She had great form, beautiful body position, and a very nice stuck landing. Here's that back handspring. You can see beautiful form, just floats that landing down. So this is a vault, a vault that you can tell is a work in progress, and come February, she'll probably have perfected that and be able to do it without the spot. Second vault, 8.45. Amber Lovely is up next. She is a freshman, third year on the team. Season high this year in this event, an 8.65. Doing a very, very nice vault there. This is our first look at something a little bit different. She is doing a handspring full twist. Again, great body position, good twisting, and a very nice landing on that. This vault, because it's a blind landing, is hard to stick without taking those little bottle steps, but she does such a great job. 8.7 for Amber Lovely's first vault. She just needs a little bit quicker run, and she wants that block off the platform and then do that twist very clean. Nice vault, gorgeous landing on that. You can tell she's very happy about that one. We are definitely looking for that stuck landing. No steps, no falls, no help from the coach. Now these next two gymnasts that you see in your picture, Deb, Cheney New and Liz Hammond, literally two of the state's best vaulters. Amber Lovely's last vault, 8.8. .8. Cheney last year placed fifth at the state meet, and Liz Hammond placed fourth last year. This speaks so much of her composure as a gymnast. She was in seventh grade last year. That's a pretty big feat for a seventh grader to place that high in the state meet. She'll be doing the Yurchenko. Beautiful pike position, great landing on that. She's so focused as a gymnast, never much expression after a fault one way or the other, or whatever routine she's doing, whatever apparatus. This is, you can tell, of um, being in the gym from a young age and being incredibly dedicated. And I believe when she, st when she came down, she was either level 10 or elite. Um, and that's a pretty amazing level to be to when you're, you know, in seventh grade. Nothing seems to phase her in watching her last year. Nothing did either. She's just a very well-seasoned gymnast for an eighth grader. Her first ball to 9.475, tying a season high. Beautiful. Notice the distance she gets on the backside of that vault. Judges are looking for that too. They, you have a, a pre-flight and then the block off the board and then the after flight. And she is so powerful. She travels such a great distance. And again, just a tiny hop on that landing. That was a beautiful vault. And scored a 9.55, a season high for Cheney New. Last year at State, a 9.675, got her fifth place. Now Liz Hammond, a senior captain. 9.7 last year at State. Best so far this year, 9.4. 9.7 is an incredible score. And that just goes to show you how that gymnast is going to peak at the right time. You want your highest score to be during the state meet. Very strong vaulter, great run. And boy, talk about distance. She just flew 
two on the back side of that vault. She had so much power. You can see here, great body position, tiny bend on the legs at the start, but the distance that she travels after is awesome. So believe it or not, too much power on this first thought. She needs to find that, that happy medium where she can control that power that she's got. This is another gymnast that I would love to see by the end of the year doing this vault in a laid out position because she is so strong. I think she could definitely pull that off. First vault a 9.575. Vault number two here for Liz Hammond. Beautiful. Again, the power is just amazing. You just see, she is such a strong vaulter. Great pre-flight, beautiful block on that. And she almost travels to the very back of the wall. You can't see that, but it's quite a distance for her, and she actually makes it back there quite a ways. And Liz Hammond's second vault, 9.5. Four five, so the first one will go in the books at 9.575, the highest tonight in the meet so far. The highest scores. We will go next to the balance or to the uneven bars, rather. Champlain Parks varsity will be up next on the bars. Maple Grove's junior varsity finishing up now. And we'll take a break. We'll be back with location number three, watching high school gymnastics on this Wednesday night on CCX Sports. What makes your community feel like home? Is it knowing what's happening in your neighborhood or when people know your name? Connections make us a community. For more than 30 years, Northwest Community Television has connected citizens, neighbors, even sports fans through video. As life gets busier than ever, we will still offer you a connected community experience through CCX Media so you can stay connected to the place you call home. There's our score through one rotation as teams complete their warm-ups for the uneven bars. Maple Grove 36.65, Champlain Park 36.6. We expect a tight meet throughout. Maple Grove looked like they had a good lead going into the last couple of alters, but then he had Cheney New throws a 9.55 and Liz Hammond a 9.55. Five seven five, and all of a sudden they're back within five one hundredths of a point. They are. That is a very strong vaulting team, and I think it's only going to get stronger as we watch the rest of the season. Like I said, they had those two happier chinkles. We're starting out with our first gymnast for Champlain Park on the uneven bars. This is Lily Sutherland. She is a sophomore. One note that uh, John Winey had told us about. Lily coming back from a ligature strain in the ribs. And I would think of all four events, you wouldn't want to have some discomfort in your ribs. All oh, the stretching and the twisting, twisting and, the and turning. everything that you do on the bars would be particularly difficult. But that's a pretty good routine here for Lily. It was a beautiful routine. What I love about her is the fact that watch every move just heads right into the next. It's so fluid. There's not breaks, there's not stops. And this dismount. I love when we see things that are totally out of the norm. I haven't seen that one. Um, I don't think we saw that at all last year. A lot of the girls are doing the flyaway, so it's very fun for original to see the gymnast change it up, and she does a half twist front flip off the bar. She should get an excellent score. Solid start for the Champlain Park on the bars. Kara McElmurray was up next. We await the score for Lily Sutherland. And a 7.85 for Lily Sutherland. Now Kara McElmurray. She's missing just that big giant in the release move. Otherwise, I think that was a great routine. Okay, here's the giants that we talked about quite a bit. 
should go into a beautiful layout, flyaway, dismount. That was a, a second good routine. She had a couple of form breaks at the, the top of those joints that will cost her some deductions for the bent legs. But you'll see here, great change of direction, which is a requirement. Does a free hip cast squat on to the low bar, long hang cap. You see there, just a little bit of a bent leg as she's trying to make it to the top of those, but this couldn't get any more perfect than that gorgeous flyaway dismount. Judges are looking for that laid out back flip to appear like it's just floating in her stead. It was, it's a good job. Perkins is senior. She will be next for Champlin Park. And a score of 7.80 for Kara McElmary. Starting off with that kip cast to the switch kip, which is that change of direction. Free hip almost into a handstand. Beautiful, beautiful giants. Look at the form, they're awesome. And again, that gorgeous laid out flyaway. Absolutely no stepping on that landing. John, I gotta say, it's a little nerve wracking. The bars are shaking and at this gym last year, they kind of collapsed. So I'm like, we might need to tighten them up a little bit. Makes me nervous. But you couldn't have done this routine any better. It was absolutely gorgeous. And she does her long hake. Free hip almost to that handstand position goes right into those giants. This is how you want those giants to be. They're straight, um, straight arms, straight legs. Beautiful landing on that dismount. She had a tiny bit of an arch at the top of that handstand, but not much to speak of. Great routine. So I apologize for giving you the names of the Rebels gymnasts and the beans and not for the bars. First, we had Sydney Eckert. She had a seven point. 8.5. Avery Donovan was the freshman that had a 7.8. And Lily Sutherland, who we just saw, one judge has posted an 8.5. And we'll see what the fourth, the second score will be. Is Tara McElmary, who actually is coming up next, will be the fourth gymnast. So my apologies. Well, they both begin with B. <laughs> Great start. I love when these free hips are performed like that where nothing touches on that back hip circle. Here's that long hand hip cast into those handstands. Beautiful giants, no arch in your back, arms are straight, legs are straight. And again, just that float to the ground, layout flyaway, nice routine. Kara's best score in this event this year has been an 8.65. Lily Sutherland scored an 8.55 a moment ago. That was her season high. So that's the kind of improvement you look for as a coach. They get a little bit better as you can each meet. And that's that's what you expect of your gymnast throughout the season. They are practicing new tricks and new skills, but you want the perfection of the skills that they bring to the table when the season starts. Maybe some new tricks that they had learned last year. But you always want to improve on that and your goal every meet increase your score increase your score increase the amount of difficulty that you bring to that routine also i think when we come back from the winter break that's when you're going to see girls maybe showing some of the new stuff that they weren't quite ready to show at the beginning of the season now just watching this bar routine during warm-ups it's pretty spectacular 8.7 for Karen McElmary. Now, look at Cheney New. There, she'll get credit for a release move on that. Here she is doing front giant work, which is incredibly difficult. And I think, yes, double back fireway. You feel like you're watching her in the state mate. 
I'm sorry, my breath is taken away a little bit here. That was absolutely phenomenal. I love the fact that she did the Giants. I believe they call that in the stalter position, which is uh, when the gentleman on high bar, she does a half turn. You're doing your Giants kind of in a backward position. She does get extra credit for those pirouettes on the top. And you can't do this dismount any better than that. Cheney's already tied the school's all-time bar record this year, 9.55 set by Brittany Magdal in 2008. Let's see how this one is scored. And, and the incredible thing here is she is tiny little thing. She's able to do these giants in a full body position because she fits between the bars. Very, very fun to watch. I think everyone's waiting for a pretty big score on that. We'll hang on a moment for the score here for Cheney New before we go wow. to break. Wow. 9.7. All time school record. That is three tenths the from a perfect score on the bars. That is incredibly difficult to do. And I gotta say, I really don't know where any of the deductions really came from. It was, it's hard to, to even find them in that routine. That'll be an exciting one to watch come sections. We'll take time out. We'll see Maple Grove up on the uneven bars in a moment. More gymnastics on CCX Sports after this time out. They said a bottle was just a bottle. That no one would ever notice me. But I knew I could be more. That one day, I would make people smile. The bar scorers begin to recap for Champlain Park. Sydney Eckert a 7.85, Avery Donovan a 7.8, Lily Sutherland at 8.55, Kara McElmurray 8.7, and Cheney New finishing with a 9.7. Their team score 34.8, and through two events at 71.4. Now Maple Grove, Abby Thule will be up first. Abby again is just one of these little itty bitty gymnasts, but she is so strong and so good. Desi starting off there with a kick cut catch and a switch kick for that beautiful change of direction. Here's her giants. Watching her, she did the layout fly away. Again, just floats it into a wonderful landing. Because she did the kip cut catch, which we'll see, um, that is technically a release move so that it can increase the difficulty of the routine and possibly, you know, watching them in warm-ups, I think they're going to, if they stay on the bars, they're going to be able to rack up some pretty high scores here. And that's one of the only things the Champlain team is missing is some of those release moves. Again, those Giants were gorgeous. She had great body position, and that layout flyaway just floated to the ground. We've seen a couple of girls during warm-ups end with that double back, and here's one that we're gonna see here too. And that's not a dismount that you see that often in high school gymnastics. And I think they have at least three that I saw during warm-ups. We'll wait for the score for Gabby Thule. She's just an eighth grader. Next up, Kiara Poling. We saw Kiara in the vault earlier, scoring 8.5. Kiara pulling. Beautiful free hip. That hip circle again almost into that handstand position, which is great. There's a hip cut catch on the high bar. Again, beautiful release move. Free hip into. Oh gosh, that was so close. Very nice. She almost, almost did that. That was a beautiful routine up till that point. She had the elements, the handstands, the release moves. You'll see right here. She does that. Free hip almost into a handstand, switch kip. 
She'll go for a long hang and then she'll kip cut catch right into free hip handstand. And here's that double back. She just needs to get her shoulders up a little bit higher. Um, I think she should definitely be proud of that. And again, this is a time of year when it's, I mean, it's never okay to make the mistakes. But now you know, I gotta, you know, have a little bit more power coming off of those giants. There on your right is Sabrina Dance, who was on the coaching staff. You can see that her season would be ended very shortly here. She's <laughs> daughter of head coach Shannon Hoover. Sabrina Hoover was a great high school gymnast, state champion up at Rogers, and expecting her second child any day now. Loves gymnastics, loves being with the girls, but will have a little bit of less commitment this season. But well, congratulations to the and that's incredibly the and dancer family. Fair because she looks amazing pregnant. So kudos to to her. She's absolutely darling. We're awaiting the score on Kiara polling. Gabby Thule pulled an 8.55 for that opening Maple Grove routine here on the bars. Emma Siemens is next. And then the top score for Maple Grove on the vault a few minutes ago, scoring a 9.45. 7.75 the score for Kiara Poling. She's doing some long hang kips. Here's her release move. Beautiful job. That was so nice. She touched her feet a little tiny bit during warm up, so I think she's very happy. Here's her giants that are absolutely gorgeous. She will do a layout flyaway again, just floating down. Lands almost in a perfect stand-up position. Great routine for her. You'll see here she starts more on, you know, a little bit more unusual than some of the gymnasts doing long hand kips to the high bar. She shoots over the low bar, does a half twist, and then takes that right into a kip. And again, great giants. There's one, two, and Here's her beautiful layout flyway. Solid landing. I always love watching gymnasts that are taller because they have such great lines when they're, they're tall. And um, this is an event that being taller makes it more difficult. Well, she made it look like it was incredibly easy. Harris Turner will be up next for Maple Grove. 8.7 score for Emma Siemens. Personally, I would have awarded a little bit higher score than that. Again, starting the same with those long hang kips. She does the same release move over the top. Even though she had bent legs, it was nice they didn't touch. Here's her giant sequence. And I believe she's our second double back. Beautiful, nice job. While her, her grip came, the strap around her grip came off at the end. Can be a little freaky sometimes. Karis has scored as high as 8.9 this year in the bars. We'll see if this routine matches or exceeds that. It was a great routine. There's just that form break when she was doing that release move, but this was a beautiful double back. Tiny little step on the end there. <laughs> Did you see her? Oh my gosh. <laughs> great job by Karis Turner. Emma Engard will be up next. I love when we watch teams that just really have fun. You know, Maple Grove team seems like they enjoy themselves as a team. They're very supportive of each other. They have very loud fans. <laughs> what you love? 9.0 for Karis Turner, so Good a season score. high for her. Now here's MM Guard. Great release move, tiny little tap of her feet on the bottom. That'll be a small deduction, but she'll get ready for her giants here. And she was also working on a double 
Flyway at the end. Beautiful, nice job. I love the originality in the Maple Grove routines. They're starting from the high bar and they're doing their um, long hang kip sequence that have that release move over the low bar, go straight into their giants and their double flyaways. Great job. These giants were wonderful. And their body position's great, and you'll see here just a tiny, tiny little step on that landing. She should be very happy with that routine. The judges right now, two of the three judges are sisters, and they both happen to be on the uneven bars. They're the coaches for Hopkins High School. Megan Johnson and Emily Johnson will see them in the coaching role in about a month, Deb, when we do the Hopkins Wyzetta meet. You know, I guess when you think about it, it's probably not a bad idea. You know, coaches do make good judges. They are so, you know, in tune to every little rule change or new things. I mean, the judges are too, but you are working with these girls on a daily basis, their own team, and seeing things that could be, um, you know, it, again, we look at this sport, it's like skating. One of the only sports really that's judged by humans. Judges are conferring now, Emily and Megan Johnson, about that uh, score for Emma Ungard. Was one uh, of the scores that flashed an 8.85 score, but I don't think that was the score that Emily Johnson had come up with. So now she and Megan are conferring there about that, that final score. Now this would be interesting being that they're sisters. I wonder what the conversation is. But basically, if you, uh, if you are over a five tenth in discrepancy in the in the scoring, you have to go to the other judge and you have to go back and look at it. they kind of take like shorthand. Every trick has a squiggle mark. I mean I don't know how else to describe it, but maybe one coat or one judge saw something a little bit different than the other judge. So that can be where the score discrepancy comes from. We've got that solved, we'll come back with our next routine, we will move to the balance beam. Maple Grove up first. Take a break. More gymnastics on CCX Sports after this timeout. The color in my garden keeps the pink of my cheeks. I was very independent and thought I could take care of myself. I fell and I had to have meals on wheels. They're my savior. My name is Lola Silvestri. America, let's do lunch. Drop off a hot meal and say hello. Volunteer by donating your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. We are underway at the balance beam at Maple Grove High School. With our fifth of eight rotations. Kier Poling leading us off for the Crimson. And then guard, Ashley Song, Grace Dukeson, and Alex Kerr to follow. Beautiful standing back flip. I always like to point out to our watchers that this beam is four inches wide and about four feet off the floor. And if you think or if you get a chance, it's about the width of one of their feet. So imagine, there's a great shot of that. Imagine them flipping and turning and jumping and landing on the balance beam. There's a beautiful back handspring with a back walkover connection. Very good. Gorgeous show of flexibility. Nice full turn. That is a requirement. Every gymnast you ha have on the balance beam today will have a full turn in their routine. Yeah, getting ready for her dismount. Beautiful. Well. Nice back handspring, back flip, great connection on that. She didn't fall, she stayed on. She had that wonderful difficulty that should be a decent score. We have said so many times throughout the year, a lot of team competitions, if they're close, come down to this event. You want to have five for five girls that are up, they compete, they don't fall, they're consistent, the scores get increase as each gymnast 
you put your probably most solid gymnast that'll set that that bench score for you and you just want to build from that moment on and teams can get on a roll they can get in that energy when one hits and the next hits and the next ticks which is beautiful and it can work the other way too if you have a fall now you know the other four have to stay on the beam there's a lot more pressure on this In fact, this summer in the Summer Olympics, very uncharacteristic of Simone Biles, she actually fell off the belt, still won the all around because she was that much better. But it just goes to show you, Beam doesn't care who you are or how good you are. That was a great performance by the U.S. Oh, they were unbelievable. So far ahead of the, the rest of the world. Marta Caroli did a phenomenal job at picking out the team. The vanguard is up next. Score of 8.625 for Kiara Poling. Beautiful cartwheel connection into a round off. Excellent standing back flip. Very solid. Nice switch lead. To a jump split, three-quarter tuck jump. Great combination. Coming up with her dismount. Round off layout. Nice job. She should be very, very happy with that routine. This standing back flip, that's two we've seen from Maple Grove. And they make it look so easy, but I'm here to tell you, it's really not. It's hard enough to do that on the floor, let alone on a balance beam that's four inches. He'd love to possibly get a shout out to our Minnesota Zone, Maggie Nichols, who was so close to making the Olympic team. She did not. She had a pretty serious injury about three months prior, but she's at Oklahoma and doing phenomenal in her first year as a college gymnast. Enjoyed watching her all last year. Product of Twin City Twisters up in Champlin. Yep. They'll be moving to Brooklyn Park actually in 2017. Well, they will. I did not know that. Mike's had that gym for a very, very long time and has produced some wonderful gymnasts out of it. Emma awaiting her score as Ashley Song awaits her turn. Ashley returning varsity gymnast for Maple Grove and a good score for Emma Ungard at 8.9. Nice score. Gets that dreaded full turn out of the way right at the, at the beginning. Ashley competed junior varsity in both the vault and bars. First and only appearance tonight in the varsity here on the beam. Very nice front lockovers. Those are incredibly difficult because you really can't see. You're just kind of hoping that your foot's there when you're tumbling forward. Oh, and love. she was able to hang on to, to that. This is what's so fun about gymnastics, too, is you might have a really strong event where you can compete on the varsity, but maybe the other events, you know, you still need a little bit more time on JV, so you get to do both. There is her jump sequence, wolf jump into a twisting tuck jump. Very nice cartwheel, full twisting back layout, great routine for her. Anytime you add twisting elements to the dismount, you're definitely increasing the difficulty of that dismount. And you'll see here, there's the front walkovers. You can kind of tell too, it's like blind. And they were rock solid. And here is her cartwheel. No hesitation right into that full, full twisting back foot. Nice routine for her. Just 
Three very solid routines so far, Debbie, for Maple Grove here on the beam. And again, as a coach, that's all you can ask of your girls. And that's why you want those five most consistent gymnasts on this event, especially this event. Because when you're looking at four inches, all you have to do is have a hip that's not aligned, a shoulder that's dipping too much, and you're standing next to the beam before you even know that. So they have so far had three really great performances on the balance beam. Again, waiting for judges' scores. Dawn Anderson and Emily Johnson, the judges on this event. Grace Dukeson up next. This probably is the one event you don't want to wait for the judges' score. You just want to get up there, keep the momentum going. Ashley Song with a score of 8.725. Beautiful jump sequence there. Wolf jumping to full twisting tuck jump. Grace is a sophomore, another returning varsity performer. When they took gymnastics, and I, I know a lot of um, junior highs and middle schools no longer have gymnastics, so the girls can actually start competing at the high school level at quite a young age. A split jump to a twisting wolf jump again. Full twisting front layout, good routine, another solid routine didn't have the tumbling difficult on the beam that we've seen in some of the other girls, but her dance, um, again, anytime you add any type of turns, you know, full twist to jumps, that adds to the difficulty. There's a cartwheel, she kicks straight into a round off. And there's that full twisting front flip. Alex Kara will be the fifth and final gymnast. Grace Dukeson awaiting her score. Alex Kara coming up here. They have the only senior among their varsity gymnasts. The rest of this team all coming back. Wow. That'll be a lonely senior night. <laughs> Watching her in warm-ups, too. She's just a very solid beam marker. Kind of get a chance to see some of the Champlain Park JV girls performing on the floor exercise. While the varsity girls are performing on the beam, the JV girls are performing on the floor. Yes. Very nice. Punch front, walk out, round up, back handspring, back flip with incredible height. Alex Kerr is ready to go back here on the beam. Grace Dukeson scores an 8.975. Alex Kerr has been as high as 9.25 on the beam this year. She just has such great lines and great form on the beam. She's very, very fun to watch. They're doing a back shoulder roll there, which is, you know, more on the unusual sign. Gorgeous full turn. She's a Beautiful dancer up there as well. Three-quarter wolf jump into that twisting split jump. Kurt will swing through right into the round off solid. Switch sleep, oh, just, just off, just that tiny bit. It 
Doesn't, doesn't take much, but that was a beautiful switch leap up to that point. Jump split. She has great heights on all of her jumps and leaps. Getting ready for the dismount. Front flip with a full twist, unfortunately just wasn't able to hang on to that landing. She is such a pretty gymnast to watch. It was a beautiful routine. There was the fall on the during and then she had the fall on that. But again, this is the time of year that, you know, it's kind of a bummer, but it's also middle of the season. You just want to go back into the gym and work on the consistency. You see here, she just kind of over-rotated, almost kept twisting just a little bit. And I was just glad to see she didn't get hurt. Right. So we'll await the score for Alex Carroll before our next break as Champlain Park's junior varsity finishes up on the floor exercise. Champlain Park's got a tough varsity lineup to crack. It's, uh, a lot of these girls have, are very talented but maybe can't make, at least in some nights, the, the top five in in the floor exercise the or floor. any of the events. Exactly. And that's you know, being five strong on all of the events, but I'm just glad they got a little bit of air time right here because that's really, that'll be fun when she gets to see that, hey, she was, got to be on television for a little bit. And it was, just, it was a great routine for her. Alex Carroll, we'll see how much those falls cost are definitely going to impact her score. That's still a pretty nice score with two falls. She lost an entire point because of the fall, and she also, there was a deduction for missing the connection. So you can, you know, bet that she would have been, you know, in the low nines, which is a great score for that routine. Ends up with an 8.125. We'll take time out. Champlain Park up on the balance beam. More high school gymnastics on CCX Sports after this timeout. I adopted Bento in 2010 from a shelter. As it turns out, we have very similar personalities. And this cat makes me make art because he's always motivating me to take pictures of him, to draw pictures of him. He just is motivating artistically. It's just that simple. Well, he's my best friend, but a lot of people know him as Keyboard Cat. John Jameson, Debbie Rass was sent back here at Maple Grove High School. Northwest Suburban Conference gymnastics meet tonight on CCX Sports. Champlain Park up next here on the balance beam. And let's make sure that your announcer gets the names all right this time. <laughs> Me, Lily Sutherland, Kara McElmary, Emma Perkins, Liz Hammond, and Cheney New. Now I can tell you that Lily Sutherland is coming off a ligature strain in her ribs. It was not Sydney Eckert. Well, and like you were saying earlier, that's just a tough injury to have in this sport altogether. You're constantly twisting, turning. It's a lot of wear and tear on the body. Now we're ready to go. Starts out with a beautiful no-handed mount right into that wolf jump. Yeah. Ready for her first tumbling sequence. Beautiful back walk over right into the next one. What the judges are looking for is there is no stop in the motion, and that's what she performed with great form. One back walk over led right into the next. Switch leap with a split jump and a quarter turn. Very nice 
nice show of flexibility. Boy, that bad. That was a nice save on the back hamstring. That first foot, I think she only had two and a half toes. That was all that landed, so nice save for her. Lily's top score in this event, 8.175. Beautiful connecting, cartwheel, backflip. Other than a couple of bobbles in some areas, I thought that was a great start for Champlain Park. Good routine. We'll take a look at those, the back walkover, and you can tell she never stops that movement, and that's what's so important on that. Here was her cartwheel. Right into the backflip again, no stop, no hesitation. Great connection for her. Seems pretty happy with them. We'll see if she still is happy once the scores are posted. Exactly. And we've got Maple Grove JV this time performing on the floor exercise. It's always fun when you're on the balance beam that there is music in the background. You hate to be that last gymnast when there's no, no sound and you're the only one left to go on the beam. It doesn't happen that often, but it can happen. Getting some last minute advice from her coach. On the balance beam, your favorite event, going back to your days it at was Cooper and Augsburg, right? It was my favorite event, yes. It was my scariest event, but I, I really enjoyed being a beam marker. Kara McElmurray is up next, score of 8.5. To lead things off for Champlain Barnes and Lily Sutherland, so that was a season high for her. Her very first tumbling sequence, back handspring into the back walkover. Again, great connection with no hesitation in between the two tricks. The back handspring's got more difficulty than the back walkover, so she should have a nice little bonus there for that. The full turn required in every balance beam routine. Switch sleep and twisting wolf jump. When I watched this, we didn't have this kind of difficulty back in the day on the wood beam, mind you. Um, and they don't even hesitate. It's like, okay, I'm just going to add a full twist to this jump or that jump. Her, her dismount there, back handspring right into the back flip. Again, a really solid routine for Champlain Park with a great connection on that dismount. Her season high, 8.625. Very solid for Kara here. She back handspring into the back walkover. Here's the back handspring immediately into that dismount. She had great height. She did the whole back flip with her head over that balance beam, so that was a good job. Seems pretty pleased with that routine. Always good when a gymnast is smiling when the routine is over. Love this music on the floor X. Next up, we will see Emma Perkins for the first time tonight. We'll also see her on the floor exercise. Senior captain, steep individual qualifier last year on the beam with a 9.2 score. Season best record so far this year, a 9.1. This a is good a score of 8.975 just a moment ago for Kara McElmurray. Excuse me, Deb. No, I was just gonna say, this is a tough position. You, we were probably, what, an hour plus into this meet and this is your first event and it's the balance beam and you're the captain. <laughs> Coach must have lots of faith in her on this event. Oh. So again, adding that twisting wolf jump, and when your shoulders are off, it doesn't take a whole lot. Back 
flip, just a tiny little balance check there. Shows the signs of a very confident and consistent gymnast when you have a fall on something so, you know, not as difficult as the next skill coming up and then you just nail the difficult skill. It's a good athlete. And a round off right into that tuck back flip. Tiny little step on the landing. Disappointed in that fall on the twisting wolf jump, but she comes back and nails the backflip. See here, this was just solid. And a dismount for Emma. Round off. Backflip. The round is a tough thing to do on the balancing because you actually need both feet to land on that four inches. So some of the girls, you know, they have a foot in front, or but they have to land at the same time to have you get full credit for that skill. She did a great job there. Watching the Maple Grove team too, we've seen some dynamite floor routines in the JV, and the same thing goes for them. They have a pretty solid varsity team too, so it's hard to make your way up there. Especially, like you say, they only have one senior on the team. That's, that's pretty great. Well, Perkins fall cost her half a point. 8.4 is her score. And now Liz Hammond, her season best on the beam, a 9.0. Beautiful starting full turn. Great back flip again, very solid. Showing us a little balance and change of direction. Always good. Switch leap into twisting split leap. Beautiful height on that. But again, just off a little bit. Wow, nice job standing full twist back flip. That's tough to do when you're not doing it either out of a cartwheel or out of a round off. Here's that back flip, just makes it look effortless so easy. And uh, back flip with the full twist dismount. We'll see how Liz scores. He won the vault earlier with a score of 9.575. Judges, little conferences. Again, just another opportunity to watch some JV girls on the floor. Wow, quite an opening sequence for a JV gymnast. She does a round of back handspring, one and a half twist. And here you are as you're the, the next champ at Park Gym is up to go. So you've just watched two of your teammates have falls on the beam. You know how important it is for Cheney to stick this. But I can tell you, I wouldn't want another gymnast in this position other than her. She seems unwavered by anything else that's going around. She is just solid. She's consistent, um, very well trained. 
So if you, as a coach, if you want someone in this position, it's going to be her. Score of 8.225 for Liz Hammond. She knew 9.475 to make the podium at State a year ago in this event. 9.4 rather, and fifth at State last year. Liz Hammond also on the podium. She had the 9.475. Cheney's best a 9.4 in that fifth place finish. Again, just incredible feat. That was a beautiful connection back walkover into back handspring. Gorgeous full turn. Switch leap. Beautiful split leap with a turn. Getting ready here for a dismount. Wow, round off full twist with an incredible landing. I almost got scared like I was gonna jinx it. <laughs> and I didn't. Thank goodness Cheney did a beautiful job. But again, that's the gymnast that you want in this position. You want that super consistent, super solid, right there, connection, gorgeous, back walk over, back handspring, no hesitation. And this was just a beautiful round up, back handspring, full twist, great height, solid landing. She's just so even calm. Yes. <laughs> you know? 9.4 is her season best. We'll see where this one lands, but that's uh, got to be right in that 9.4 area, I've got to believe. Yep, and just really fun to watch. Ashley Song's competing right now in the Junior Varsity 4 exercise from Maple Grove as we await Cheney News score. You saw her for Varsity on balance game, correct? Yes. There we go. Again, right there, her third and final tumbling pass. Round up two back handsmans into a full twist. A lot of gymnasts will open with that tumbling pass and she ends with it. And back here on the beam, Cheney New, a 9.55 score. Excellent Season score. high, beats her mark from last year at State, and a great way for Champlain Park to wrap up on the balance beam. We will come back, go to the floor exercise next. Rebels up first, take time out. More high school gymnastics on CCX Sports after this. What makes your community feel like home? Is it knowing what's happening in your neighborhood or when people know your name? Connections make us a community. For more than 30 years, Northwest Community Television has connected citizens, neighbors, even sports fans through video. As life gets busier than ever, we will still offer you a connected community experience through CCX Media, so you can stay connected to the place you call home. Well, look at how close we are. 15 hundredths of a point between Maple Grove and Champlain Park. Each team completing three rotations. Maple Grove up 106.975 to Champlain Park's 106.825. That's uh, kind of what we expected coming in. Both teams in that 139 range coming into tonight. And I would guess yeah, we're going to have around 140 for each team tonight. Exactly. Close and to 107 right now with one event to go. And you've got those falls on Champlain Park, which I'm sure they'd like to have back. But, you know, there's a whole point right there when it when it comes to that and stuff. So, um. Sydney Eckert leads us off on the floor exercise for Champlain Park. Our season high, 8.725. Beautiful opening tumbling sequence, round up, two back handsprings, full twist. She was so high that she almost bounced herself out of bounds there. You'll see on the floor X, the white area, a gymnast cannot step out of that. That is a deduction. The 
floor mat is actually 40 by 40. That was a great front handspring layout front. She has amazing height on a lot of her tumbling skills. An aerial cart cartwheel showing us some of her original dance moves. Ready for a third and final tumbling pass. Punch current walk off. Round off back handspring full twist. Nice way to end that routine. Boy, that move there called the Bell does. I haven't seen that in a long time. Big signature move back in the 80s, you know. Sydney Eckert. First gymnast up on the floor exercise for Champlin Park. Nice opening routine for her as well. Floor exercise is probably one of the most fun for the girls. They, eat, they all have to have three tumbling passes. Here's her first one. She opens up with round of two back handsprings and do a really high full twisting backflip. She has to show us front tumbling, which she does beautifully there in a front handspring layout front flip. And she ends with punch front walkout round up back handspring full twist. You will see a lot of girls will open or that will be their second pass. You get extra bonuses if your third pass, which is when you're the most tired, is as difficult as possibly your first pass. I thought she executed that very well. It was fun to watch. She choreographed it well, moved with the music well. Judges Just, Dawn Anderson, Megan Johnson on this event, compiling their scores. Just like on the balance beam, there are specifics. You have to have full turns. You have to have jump leak, acrobatic sequences and connections. Sarah McElmurray up next. Personally, my, my favorite is when they smile like this. Look how cute she is. And that's letting the judges know you are having a blast. You're loving your floor routine. Love the sport. And I think that's just a little added touch. Sydney Eckert at season high 8.775. Now, Kara McElmurray, who's high score this year in this event, 8.925. Opened up with a roundup back handspring, one and a half twist, nicely done, had great height. That is also a blind landing because she adds that extra twist. You kind of can't see where you're coming down. Second tumbling pass, front handspring laid out front flip. As a gymnast, you want to pick music that gets you motivated and excited, and you can just tell she's having a great time out here. She probably smiles while she's tumbling. I'll have to take a look and see. She heads off into the corner for a third and final tumbling pass. Round up back handspring full twist. Nice way to end that. Happy floor team, happy gymnast. That was a nice job for her. Nice. Here are the second gymnast. Next up will be Emma Perkins. She'll be followed by Liz Hammond and Cheney New. Here she has that opening sequence, and again, she has so much height. She almost ends that standing straight up. Her second pass was that front handspring laid out front flip. Nice job. And then finally, we'll see her end with the round up back handspring full twist. Beautiful height, beautiful form. A little bit low on those shoulders. Judges like to see you stand that up a little bit more. But all in all, I think that was a very, very good floor routine for her. Perkins up next. 
had that fall on the beam. I'm sure anxious to get out on the floor. And yep. Forget about that. Forget about the balance beam. Move on to the next event. And again, being that she had sat for the first hour plus of that, you know, and that's just the way gymnastics is. Vault, bars, beam, and floor. That's the rotation that most meets will go by. Kim Hackelmurray, 9.1 score. That's a season high for her. So Good score for her. First two gymnasts getting season best scores. Emma Perkins, best this year, 9.125. Her all-time best, 9.175. Does that opens up with that one and a half fill twist. Great height on that. Beautiful twisting split leap, twisting wolf jump. Puts into the corner for the second tumbling pass. Handspring, layout front flip. Full twisting split jump. Third and final tumbling pass. Round up two back hand springs, full twist. Very unique ending. Nice job. Great routine for her. Fun to watch. Very solid by Emma Perkins. And three good routines for Champlain Park to start the floor exercise. Here's that opening one and a half. The height is what's so incredible there. I think, you know, they could actually throw some doubles in there and land them just fine. This was beautiful. Hands, front handspring layout front flip. And finally, she does round off two back handsprings, full twist. got to feel good after that routine and after the balance beam. Liz Hammond and then Cheney New to follow. Liz Hammond's best score, 9.15, or all-time best, 9.375. Well, they have definitely so far, so far made a really strong comeback here on the floor. Emma Perkins with a season high score, 9.2. Beautiful opening, full twisting lead, full twisting straddle jump. Opening sequence, on a backhand spring, one and a half twist. Nice. His very strong leaps and jumps, lands them all well. Second tumbling pass, two punch front layouts. Good job. Doing a little change of direction, slowing down, getting ready for that third final tumbling pass. Punch front round effect, handspring full twist. Great job by Liz Good Hammond. Good job for Liz. Yes, that was beautiful. Again, another gymnast that seems to really enjoy herself out there. Liz and Emma Perkins, the two senior captains for this Champlain Park team. Yeah, they lost a great gymnast to graduation last year, and Taylor Gukin, who's actually here tonight with her, with her mom watching uh, the meet. Here's that opening pass again. Round effect handspring, one and a half twists. 
Nice job. The second time I pass, she does two. There's the first front flip right into the second front flip in a laid out position. And she ends up punch front walk out round up that handspring. Full twist. Liz still trying to <laughs> catch her breath a little bit, <laughs> waiting for we her need, scores. You think about it, these poor kids probably start school at what, 7.30, 8 o'clock, yeah. then they're here all day. They maybe go home at 2.33 for a little bit. If they do, then they have to come back to the gym and have a whole gymnastics meet and end on uh, the Florex, which is uh, very, takes a lot of stamina on the floor. Each event has its own little areas. This one, you better be winded. Liz Hammond, 9.3, a season high for her. And now Cheney New. Beautiful opening. She opens with a one and a half twist, but she throws another front flip on it at the end of that. As a second pass is a front handspring, layout front, layout front. And what surprises me with her too is for how tiny she is, the height that she gets on her tummy passes as well as her jumps and her leaps. I mean, she can only be what right about four, ten, maybe five feet? I don't even know. Yep. Just a delight to watch. Cheney's top score at 9.6. She heads into the corner for her third and final tumbling pass. Punch front walk out into a full twist. Cute routine, choreograph perfectly for the music, and the music meets her personality so well, too. Very fun to watch. That should get a pretty decent score. She opens this up like all the other girls, but watch at the end. Here's her back hamstring, one and a half, boom. Layout front flip after that. And the second tumbling pass, she does front handspring, she does two layout front flips. She's not even at the end of, she could have probably thrown another one mm -hmm. in there. And then finally, punch front walk out, round up back handspring, full twist. I don't know if you can notice that, but she was higher than she is tall on that last <laughs> final right. tumbling yeah. pass. That's pretty, pretty incredible. And again, just an eighth grader for Champ on Bark. Big part of their state tournament team a year ago and would be again this year if the Rebels are able to get to state for a fourth year in a row out of section five to play. That's fun. Yeah. And tonight, this is what our first, maybe second judges conference that yes. we've had all night as Don Anderson will come over and talk with Megan Johnson about the score for, for Cheney New. And I think when you have a score that's high and this much difficulty, you want to make sure you get it right. It's somebody that they're both catching the same thing or seeing the same things in it, that routine. Exactly. And and a lot of the reasons, too, she deserves that pretty high score for the amount of difficulty that she had in that routine and the way she executed all of her skills and passes. So I think this is crucial at this point for these guys to discuss because you want to make sure that she gets every point that she deserves because that was a really, really awesome routine to watch. And again, the reason we have these judges' conferences is if there's a greater than five-tenth discrepancy in each of the judges' scores. Like, let's say one scores at a 9-0 and the other sees it as a 9-6. They have to come together and reach a score that's less than five-tenths apart. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, I'd say that Champlain Park came back incredibly strong yes. on the Florex tonight. A little tiny shaky on the balance beam, but boy, did they make up for it here on the floor. A pretty long discussion, Devin, and involved. You can see they're going back and forth on um, Cheney's routine and the, the marks, the yep. deductions that uh, they took or didn't take. And a lot of it, too, is the connections that are made. You can get um, bonus points for certain connections, like when she threw that extra front flip at the end of that first tumbling pass. That's a bonus for her, as you want to make sure that she receives you know, all of the connection scores and the levels of difficulty. I will tell you, this darling little girl from Maple Grove on the balance beam, here she is, and it is... You know, there's no music playing in the background. We talked about this earlier, and you know, not a not a fun position, but she seems to be handling it beautifully. And that was a gorgeous back handspring back foot for her. Gabby Thule wrapping up the Maple Grove's Junior Varsity competitors on the balance beam. We continue to wait on the score for Cheney New. One of the longest waits, I think, yeah. that we have seen. On the, um, in any of our judges' conferences in our you know, few short 20 years right. that we've been doing this together. 20? The 25 now, Dad. Oh, I know. <laughs> well, that's so difficult since we graduated in, like, you know, 98. Right, right. We're yes, just, we were just <laughs> middle school kids when we started. 9.55 from one judge on uh, Cheney's routine. We'll see what the other score will be. Looks like, looks like the coach is going to throw a score up there, and he may throw a 10. I don't know. He's got the little score. Doohickey dabber shower thing. Is that the technical uh, term I for it? I think it, it is. <laughs> well, they're still going to talk. Cheney's still kind of looking it. over there. What's my score? Again, just very calm, though. Yeah. You know, they did an amazing floor to you, so worth the wait for the score. <laughs> Meanwhile, I think, I hope they'll let the Maple Grove girls um, go ahead and get started. I think they'll wait till all five scores are in before they'll start to the, get the started. Warm up. I gotta tell guess, you, I, John Whiney is now over there talking with the, the judges, mm -hmm. with Don Anderson and, and Megan Johnson. Yeah. Um, I love how coaches when they always you know, want to argue for their kids, which is yeah, should. Absolutely, you, know. you want to make sure they get all the credit that they. Yeah. And here she's going, and she had this, and this connection is here. You do want to fight for your girls. Now, I just want to point out that last little girl from Maple Grove as a JV beam scored a 9-1. That's, like, amazing. Good for her. I don't know if we've reached the decision yet or not. Well, let's get some jivey music and get the crowd going and a little dance off, possibly. <laughs> Well, they have started the warm-up. We'll take a break. We'll come back. We'll give you the score, and then we'll see Maple Grove's varsity up on the floor exercise. More high school gymnastics on CCX Sports from Maple Grove Senior High after this. I adopt 2010 from a shelter. As it turns out, we have very similar personalities, and this cat makes me make art because he's always motivating me to take pictures of him, to draw pictures of him, he just is motivating artistically. It's just that simple. Well, he's my best friend, but a lot of people know him as Keyboard Cat. Kate Soselski will start us off for Maple Grove on the floor exercise. She will be followed by Grace Dukeson. Harris Turner, Emma Elgarn, and Emma Siemens. 9.65, the score for Cheney New, and all five Champlain Park gymnasts hit season high scores. They close with a 9-1, 9-2, 9-3, and a 9-6, 9-6-5. 
That is a huge score for the Florex. First saw Kate Soselski earlier starting the night on the vault. Gorgeous opening, round off, back handspring, one and a half twists, and nice twisting straddle jumps. Two punch fronts, a little tiny low on that second one, but it's a difficult sequence. Dramatic music with very dramatic choreography as well. Setting up for her third and final tumbling pass. Round up two back handsprings, full twist. Ending pose, great, great start for Maple Grove on the floor. Kate Zaselski, she is a freshman for this Maple Grove team, and we'll get part of her routine again. Opens up with the round of back handspring, one and a half twist. Second one here, she'll do punch front, punch front. She's just a tiny bit low on that. Had to take a little step forward on. Second pass, this one was just great. Round up, two back handspring, very solid full twist. Nice standing position. Seems very pleased, big smile. Their warm ups are throwing me because every time I, if I don't look at their hair boards, they're navy, so I think it's champagne. Right. <laughs> Wait, that's Maple Grove and Champlain's wearing white, so. Or maybe they're black and I'm just a little on the colorblind side today. Score of 8.9 for Kate Soselski. Grace Dukeson up next. Beautiful front handspring, full twist, front flip on the back side of that. Tough job. Now you'll see that she has a big crash pad out there. There is no deduction for that. As long as she doesn't step out of bounds, they are allowed to have that little bit of extra protection for ankles. You can tell she's nursing a bum foot. Second tumbling pass. And a two back handsprings, full twist. Nice job. <laughs> I love the teammate on the side doing the floor routine with her. This is her third and final tumbling pass. Round up two back handsprings into a back tuck. Nice job. Very cute routine for her. Grace Dukeson happy with that routine as she finishes her night here. I loved her opening sequence. It's not too often that we see a full twisting front flip. She does a handspring full twist. It's a great opening sequence for her. Here she goes, front handspring, full twist on the flip side. Good job. Her second round up two back handsprings into a full twist. And ends with round up two back handsprings back tuck. Nice job. 
Karis Turner will be up next. Again, the waiting game. Mm -hmm. We jinxed ourselves. We said how great it was at the <laughs> beginning that we didn't have so many. And totally your well, fault, John. Totally. We only had one, but that was a long one. <laughs> it was That's a long one. Finish up Champlain Park on the floor. There we go. Grace Dukeson with a score of 9.075. Good score for her. This event, you don't care as much about waiting as you do on the balance beam. Spring one and a half. Again, so much height on that. She took a couple of steps on that landing. It's kind of the, the curse of being almost too high, but it was still very nicely done. Love the double twisting handstand pirouette. Right into the twisting split jumps. Second tunnel pass. Front handspring layout front flip. Which ring right there. Again, they just have great height on their jumps and their leaps. Third and final tumbling pass. Round up two back hand springs, full twist. Nicely done. Well done by Karis Turner. Seems happy. She had a lot of power tonight on this first one. She was um, she was so high. She could have probably added that extra half twist. Let's see there. I mean, it's not a big deduction, but judges do like to see you not take so many steps out of those tumbling passes. Again, beautiful handspring front layout. And the third one, she does a two back handsprings into that full twist. Nice job. And Van Garner will be up next for Maple Grove. Crimson without one of their top gymnasts tonight. Nadia to Bid is out. She is traveling, visiting family in Dubai. She's most definitely out of town. Oh. She has left the building. Yeah. Wow, that's, so that's you know, quite a holiday vacation. Obviously affecting Maple Grove's score a little bit today, although they have done well. And it gives Different gymnasts a chance in each of these routines. We'll have to replace Nadia, a, a spot in varsity tonight, and see how they can do and score. And for the most part, their scores have been pretty solid this evening. They have, and, and you know, it gives them an opportunity to show their coaches too that hey, I can do this. I am ready to go if need be at any moment. You know, this is a dangerous sport and injuries can happen. We hope that we can make it through a whole season without them, but you want to make sure that you've got a solid gymnast in the wings ready to step in and take that position. Karis Turner has scored 9.0. Now, and now I'm on guard. Two back handsprings, one and a half twist. It's ready for second tumbling pass. Beautiful handspring layout front. This actually gives a chance for the gymnast to take a little tiny bit of a breather before she has to do that third and final tumbling pass. You'll notice in a lot of routines, part of the floor music will slow down just a little bit and then pick back up and here she is. 
Ready for that next pass. And a two back handspring. Very nice full twist. That's how you want to land a tumbling pass. Nice job. Emma Engard. Should have a third routine in the nines here, I'm guessing, for Maple Grove. Yeah, but definitely should be. Both these teams, Deb, they're going to hit season high for points. They're both going to be in the 140s. And that's a nice way to go into that holiday break. You know, even though the kids are off school, they get a little bit of time away from the gym, but they also have practice during their time off, too. Unless you're in Dubai. Right. But she's probably doing gymnastics on the right. beach there. Maybe. It's warm. It's very warm. <laughs> Of course, we're kind of having that heat wave here, so. Here's your solid, solid. That's what I was saying about the ending of a tumbling pass. Dead solid, no steps. That's the way you, you want to perform that. She had three really difficult tumbling passes, so I think she should be right up there in the nines with the rest of the team. Well, definitely one judge of 9.35. Like I said, both teams hitting some pretty high scores. 9.375 is even high for Emma Engard. I am Siemens, who has been as high as 9.4 this season. She is a powerful tumbler. Very fun to watch during warm ups. We're in for a treat here. Beautiful opening sequence. Round up back handspring, one and a half twist into front flip. Again, having a lot of fun with that choreography. Gorgeous leap series, great height, nice form. Spring full twisting, front flip, solid landing. What I love watching about her routine is not only is she a strong tumbler, she is a solid dancer with great form, really nice body position, great pointed toes, and her jumps and leaps are above hip level, and that's what you want to see. Final pass for Emma Seaman. Great job. She ends with what a lot of the girls opened with. Rhonda Beckham string, one and a half twist. And a fun smile. She had a good time out there. That routine was full of difficulty. She opens up her tumbling pass with that one and a half right into the punch front beautiful form. And here's the handspring front flip, but she adds a full twist with that. Again, increasing the difficulty. Great landing on that. It's always great to watch her, the teammates cheering the, the yes. gymnast on. And here's that one and a half, which like I said, a lot of the girls open with. It's one of the things I think I love the most about gymnastics that's changed over many decades. But it used to be a sport where you could hear a pin drop. There wasn't yelling and screaming. And Your teammates you, didn't cheer you on like that? Oh, then. no. You would have been like, knock it off. <laughs> <laughs> I might have embraced it. I think we got a good score coming up here. She seems, oh, wow. 9.625. Wow. Best score for Emma Seams. Look at and she is uh, She's ecstatic. almost going to cry here. This is wonderful. And again, great place to be, middle of the season, before that break. It's just gonna, she's just going to get stronger from here. Nice way to end. We had a terrific meet tonight. We're going to take a break. We'll come back, add up the team scores. We're going to have two scores that are going to be in the 144, one, close to 145, so nearly 
five points higher than they've been this season. That's a great leap up for each team. Yes. And we'll recap it here in a moment at Maple Grove High School. What makes your community feel like home? Is it knowing what's happening in your neighborhood? Or when people know your name? Connections make us a community. For more than 30 years, Northwest Community Television has connected citizens, neighbors, even sports fans through video. You can learn about the latest news through our truly local newscast. We cover and air around 150 high school sporting events every year. For our cities, we air parades and city meetings that you can watch whenever you want. Then, any citizen of our cities can create and share their own original content. We'll even teach you how to use the equipment too. We have always provided you with a connected community experience. And as life gets busier than ever, we will continue to engage, inform, and inspire through CCX Media. So you can stay connected to the place you call home. John Jacobson and Debbie Rasmussen back here at CCX Sports. Our coverage tonight of high school gymnastics. And Deb, in our 25 years of covering high school gymnastics, this is the closest meet we have had. Champlain Park and Maple Grove, five one hundredths of a point separating the two. There's the final. Maple Grove winning 144.05 to 144.0. Both teams were great on the floor exercise to close and Emma Siemens the 9.625 if she gets 9.615 they lose they lose you know? it and was that's that close oh my gosh it was it was absolutely wonderful and you know what we've said it all along it comes down to the balance beam I'm sure Champlain Park would like to have those two falls back that's right. a whole point but I think what's really incredible here is both of these teams increase their score by four points in gymnastics that's like you know Three touchdowns, right, right. possibly. Yeah. It's a hard thing when you are judged by tenths and one hundredths. And I mean, it's just amazing that um, this meet came down to basically the two falls on the balance beam. And this meet may very well decide the conference championship. Maple Grove could win the conference championship based on tonight's performance. There's still a lot of meets left, but these are the, the top teams. So, you know, Crimson. Knew they had to win this one if, if they wanted a shot to win the conference, and then they may well come the end of next month. Well, it was a nail biter, it was fun, and I think both teams performed beautifully. And this is where you want to be at that break for the holiday season. You want to have improved. This greatly, though, is big for both of these teams because from here on in, their scores are just continue, going to continue to increase, and they will be fun to watch come February. We will have two more regular season meets coming up next month. Osseo and Fridley, the combined team, taking on Park Center. And then a late conference meet between Hopkins and Wyzetta. So you can watch for those coming up in January. Happy holidays and best to you and yours. Happy holidays to you, too. And again, this is I always get so excited when we have more meets to do every right? year. We'll get, uh, get some good performances next month yep. from those four teams that we see. But terrific performance tonight from these girls as Maple Grove wins it by five one-hundredths of a point again over Champlin Park. That'll do it for our telecast tonight from Maple Grove High School. And for Debbie Rasmussen and all of our crew, I'm John Jacobson, thanks for tuning in for our coverage of high school sports on CCX Sports.